Here, here's the thing that I found with right-wing political pundits and uh, social commentators. <laughs> they may be ideologically driven, but they also insist on their very substantial fees, which means that they expect you to pay for their opinions, which means in turn that it's been a little difficult to get their point of view represented on this stage. Ezra Levant, on the other hand, appreciated my suggestion that we should hear from the right particularly at this time when it appears that the right is finally in a period of retreat. Now, however, I have my significant problems with the right in the area of uh, social policy, things like abortion and uh, gay marriage, marijuana, and so on. I take my hat off to Ezra Levant for defying the censors and for having the cojones to publish those Danish cartoons which, incredibly, were said to justify rioting and killing by the loony side of the Muslim world. And, I must say, regrettably, it also revealed the lily-livered nature of our own media who, under the guise of sensitivity, clearly capitulated to political correctness and to the not-so-veiled threat of violence. So Ezra just wanted Canadians to see what the fuss was all about. Um, Ezra and now Maclean's magazine are being afflicted by our so-called human rights commissions, which once established, of course, must find malfeasance to justify their own existence and are being cleverly used by Muslim <coughs> activists to shut up those critics of Islam's recent contributions to the world. So, you can print fucking Mein Kampf in Canada, but you can't print those cartoons. And to remind us that all of this is no joke at all. Last week at our radio station, we interviewed Salman Rushdie. But we could not announce the time of the interview nor invite any audience because, of course, his life has been made hellish by a fatwa placed on his head by a so-called man of God, who thereby was acting, in my opinion, not much differently from some mafioso putting out a contract on arrival. So, Ezra has been called a soapbox hero, he's been called a debating society ham. His magazine, wherein he published those cartoons, may now be defunct, but Ezra himself is as funked as ever. Where is Ezra Levant? <laughs> Thank you for that amazing introduction. I, uh, I'm impressed with your devotion to free speech, as anyone involved in communications or the expressive arts should be. And I appreciate you inviting a troublemaker like me. I have, for most of my life, considered myself a conservative, but I, I think that lately I've started to call myself a liberal. Because if you look at the root of the word liberal, it comes from the Latin word for freedom. And if you look at the things that I, I've been wrestling with over the two years, it's actually causes that the left used to champion so loudly. And one of the things I've been wondering is where are the liberals today? When it comes to matter of free speech to say the F word on TV or pornography or obscenity, the civil liberties types are very strong. But on political liberty, I regret that the champions of the separation of church and state, the champions of secular pluralism, who traditionally have been on the left and have traditionally fought against squelchers on the right, have been silent. And I think it's because they have allowed their sense of political correctness to trump their deep values, values like the equality between men and women, values that we thought we would never have to refight for those values are being challenged, even in this city, with an honor killing for which there was a first-degree murder charge just this week. <coughs> Let me uh, quickly recap the story of how I became a liberal instead of that arch-conservative from Alberta. Two years ago, as Moses mentioned, our little magazine, The Western Standard, 
published the Danish cartoons of Mohammed. Not as an act of defiance, it wasn't on our cover, it wasn't anything showy, it was just to show our readers what all the fuss was about. These Danish cartoons uh, had been uh, the excuse for rioting around the Muslim world. Over a hundred people were killed. Our readers wanted to know what it was about. We were a fortnightly magazine. We only came out every 14 days, so we thought for sure the National Post is going to run them because they're pretty conservative, and the Sun, well, that's very tabloidy, and well, if Ken White took over McLean's, they'll be spicy. We thought we would be the last guys to do it, so we just, it was a small story. But as our publication date came near, we realized we're going to be the only people doing it, and indeed, we were the only media of any size in Canada, TV or print, to run those cartoons. The day they rolled off the press, I debated against a local imam in Calgary on the radio. It's something I do all the time. But we had it back and forth, and I left, probably go on to the next debate. He was so frustrated by the fact that I refused to submit to his fundamentalist idea that no depiction of Mohammed, whether it's uh, positive or negative at all, could be printed he went to the Calgary Police Service and asked them to arrest me. Now, they were very kind and, because he's a newcomer, and they said, we don't do that here. We're not a theocracy like Saudi Arabia. So he shopped his grievance around town and found the group so illiberal that they would take his fatwa of sorts and prosecute me. The Alberta Human Rights Commission, analogous to the Human Rights Commission's three of them that are prosecuting Mark Stein and, and McLean's magazine, isn't it amazing that in the 21st century, our police are more in tune with civil liberties than groups called the Human Rights Commissions? <laughs> I have been prosecuted by the government of Alberta through an agency called the Alberta Human Rights Commission where 15 bureaucrats have been working for 800 days on my case. I'm an industry. I'm a major crime scene. <laughs> 15 bureaucrats. I think if what, what we're seeing is a soft jihad. We can win the hard jihads. Even a, a second-tier military force like Canada can beat all comers. And if anyone tries to take on the Alliance of the West militarily, we're going to win. But what about a soft jihad? Something that doesn't attack our way of life through bombs and explosions, but psychologically, that is a uh, battle of confidence. What if we start to censor ourselves? I put it to you that when most of the Western media self-censored those cartoons, which were as innocuous as anything as you would see in the Toronto Star on a regular basis, the self-censorship was a greater destruction of our Western way of life than 9-11.